We are group B27, and we are doing our lesson on universal instantiation and existential instantiation. First, for a couple definitions of each. Universal instantiation is a rule of inference used to conclude that P of C is true. Where C is a particular member of the domain X, give the premise all, for all X, there is P of X. An example of this is all dogs are mammals, therefore if Sparky is a dog, Sparky is a mammal. Next, for existential instantiation, this premise presupposes that a class has members even when we are not explicitly told so. It allows us to conclude that there is an element C in the domain for P of C is true if we know that for every x, for every value of x, the function P of x is true. We cannot select an arbitrary value of C here, but rather it must be a C for which the for which P of C is true is known. Most of the time, however, we have no prior knowledge of what C is, only that it exists. An example of existential instantiation is this. There is at least one bird, therefore suppose that some particular thing Z is a bird. Next we'll do a couple examples. These examples uh, need a many steps and use many different rules of interest inference to solve them, but we will mostly focus on our topic which is universal instantiation. Uh, universal instantiation um, in this problem is mostly used to set up the problem and it's the first step. So we'll go through that. Uh, first let me read the problem. Doug, a student in this class, knows how to write programs in Java. Everyone who knows how to write programs in Java can get a high paying job. Therefore, someone in this class can get a high paying job. So to start, uh, we'll set up uh, our basic knowledge first with C whoops, c of x is x is in the class. j of x is x knows java. h of x is x can get a high paying job. Now, we can assume the premises that Doug is in the class. Doug knows Java, which we are both given those two. And then we can also, we also know the premise given by the problem that for all x, for all x, if they know Java, then they can receive a high paying job. At this point, this is where we use universal instantiation. We have the three, we have the initial three um, statements that we can start with from the problem and then we uh, have the three premises that are given to us from the problem. Then by universal instantiation we conclude that since Doug knows Java then Doug will get a high paying job. This, that is an example of universal instantiation where we took those three premises and converted them into one. The rest of this problem is solved by modus ponens uh, and conjunction and also existential generalization. But the main, the beginning of this problem must be, uh, in the beginning of this problem, exist, or universal instantiation must be used. Okay. Our next problem uses both rules of inference 
universal instantiation and existential instantiation. Uh, similar to the last problem, uh, this problem also will use both these rules of inference to start the problem and other rules of inference will be, ne be needed to finish it. Um, so I'll read it. Everyone in New Jersey lives within 50 miles of the ocean. Someone in New Jersey has never seen the ocean. Therefore, someone who lives within 50 miles of the ocean has never seen the ocean. So to start off, we'll start with our statements. So first, j of x is x is in n New Jersey. Next statement is f of x, which we will say is x is within 50 miles of the ocean. Uh, our final statement uh, that we get from the initial problem, we will call s of x, and it will be that x has seen the ocean. So, from the problem, uh, we have to define our premises. And our first premise is that for all x, if they, this person, x, or whatever x is, is in New Jersey, then it is within 50 miles of the ocean. Uh, our second premise is for some x, for some x, if for some x there is someone who lives in New Jersey and this x has not seen the ocean. So again, similar to the last problem, uh, this is basically just the first set, step of the problem. So to carry out universal instantiation, we'll start with our first premise here. And using universal instantiation, our first premise, we can conclude that for some arbitrary y, we'll say y is some person, this person y is in New Jersey, and therefore they live within 50 miles of the ocean. So we have our first premise uh, simplified without the quantifier. Next, we will simplify our next expression with existential uh, instantiation. Um, and to do that, we say that since we know that there is a given, that there is, for some x, there is a person that um, satisfies both these conditions, then we will say that we know that for an arbitrary y, which is also a person, that this person is in New Jersey and has not seen the ocean. And as you see, we've simplified the premise without the quantifier, and we are now ready to conclude the problem. Uh, the problem concludes with a couple other rules of inf or rules of inference, including simplification, universal. Uh, actually, we already did universal and simplification, uh, modus ponens, and uh, conjunction, and then at the end, existential generalization. But as you can see, um, in conclusion, most uh, most of the time, universal instantiation and existential instantiation are used at the beginning of the problem to simplify the premises so that more rules of inference can be used. Um, that's mostly all you need to know with uh, universal and existential instantiation. Thanks for listening.